Hi, I'm Abe, and welcome to a screencast highlighting some functionality of Meowcat. Meowcat is a free and open source in-browser electronics design tool that allows for easy access to complex circuit design. With it, you'll be able to go from a schematic like this to a board layout like this, and eventually ship it off to board manufacturers to create circuits like this. In this screencast, I'm going to walk through a very simple circuit design, um, the kind of hello world of electronics, just a, an LED connected to a resistor. Um, and afterwards, I'll just give a brief overview of some of the other functionality that, uh, that might not have become apparent when going through the simple circuit design. So let's get started. I'm going to log in. of this screencast, I'm going to create a new one. So I just simply hit the Create New Project, and I'll name it LED Project. Once that's created, it appears at the bottom. These on the right here, these are snapshots of the schematic and board. Since this is a new project, it doesn't have any snapshots um, or thumbnails, so that's why the little cat head appears. So um, let's go to the schematic portion, the first one of these. And the basic idea is that we're going to design this in the schematic. This gives a kind of logical layer view of the what the board does. And then once we have a logical connection of what the board does, we'll connect the actual footprints in the board layout. Um, this will become a little bit more clear as we proceed, um, if you're not already familiar with it. Um, but for right now, we're going to design the schematic. So this is the schematic capture portion of Meowcat. In the middle here is the canvas, where you can place your different components and hook them up. On the left is the toolbox that has common tools that you use. On the bottom here is what I like to call the palette. This is just a list of components that are commonly used. Um, and on the right is the component library, which all of the components that you have access to. Um, they're grouped by name, and within the groups there's um, the individual components. And you can see clicking on a component brings it up in this uh, component uh, selector window. So let's get started. First we'll need a resistor. Let's just place that in the middle there. So just a quick word about interface. Um, the middle mouse button is used to zoom. And then once the component is placed, we can um, use the right mouse button to pan. Um, so let's just place these in a kind of nice format. And we'll put it on the right here. I'll go VCC and ground. Uh, we'll just put another VCC and ground. So what I'll be doing is I'll be supplying power through a CR2032 connector, uh, a 2032 battery. These are very common um, kind of pill batteries that you can see in watches sometimes. Um, so in order to, to supply power from the CR2032 battery, we'll put it in a CR2032 holder, um, and that's the actual component that we'll be placing down. Um, so we'll do that in one second. But for right now, we're just going to put the VCC nets here, and then we'll hook it up. Uh, we'll hook up the right hand portion and we'll put that other part in later on. So if we go to the tool portion, and we can start placing the wires, the connections from um, connecting one net to another, or connecting one component to, uh, you know, the component pins to the particular nets. Um, just clicking on that, now we're selected for the place wire. We can start placing these wires. So now, um, if we hold it over the little tool tip that appears will show us that um, there's a hotkey for this particular tool, W. Um, so after this placement, I'm just going to be using the hotkey, W. Um, and there we go. So this portion on the right hand is connected up. And now we'll look for a CR2032 holder. So let's just do a quick search. And it appears in the Add a 
Adafruit library. Now, the Adafruit library, Adafruit provides uh, a library of eco components that they use. Um, I converted those to KiCad libraries, and then I used the KiCad libraries. Um, I, I imported the KiCad libraries into MeowCAD um, for available for use in my projects. So now we can search for the CR2032 holder. We'll just pick the through hole portion, the, the through hole component, and we'll just place it. Nothing too complex. The two pronged portion is the um, BCC. So again, W for wire, and we'll just connect those up. And we'll just place a no connection on the other one. Um, just. which will become clear when we start laying out um, this this circuit in the uh, board layout. So that's pretty much it. It's a very simple circuit, nothing too complex as promised. So now we can go to the board layout portion and actually place these um, footprints. So we'll go back to the portfolio and now the LED project has a schematic and board snapshot. Um, because we started placing components, we can go to the board layout portion. And um, as you can see, these footprints are unassociated. That's why they have the little question marks in the box around them. So we're going to associate them. Um, I'm going to be using a very common, a uh, very standard KiCad library, this one. Um, and we'll just search for R and LED V. In order, in, in use for, for this project. Um, so LED V, this is just the LED footprint through all components, nothing too complex. Um, so we select it, drag it over, and we associate it. And so now this, this component, as it appeared in the schematic capture, is associated with this footprint in the board capture portion. We'll do the same thing for resistors. R5 seems fine. We'll just associate it. This one is the CR2032 holder. So we'll just do a quick search to find out you know, which where that is. And again, it appears in Adafruit, which makes sense. Um, and so we'll just try and find it in the Adafruit com the footprint library. And we'll be using the through hole again. We'll select it, drag it over, and associate it. And there you go. Just move these parts around. So that So now we're going to connect these up. Um, so this big pad here, this is the um, this is on layer 15, as you can see on the left here. Um, so this is which layer is selected. Um, right now, there's only two layers, top and bottom, zero, uh, 15 and zero. Um, the top layer happens to be layer 15, the red one. Um, so we're going to select that in order to lay down traces. We'll just keep it on the same layer. Um, and we'll start laying down the traces. So if we hit the trace tool, um, we can start laying down traces in this board capture. There you go. And just like the wire, there's a hotkey. In this case, it's X. So after this one, I'll just be using the hotkey X uh, instead of hitting the, the trace tool. So X, and now we can lay down the traces. And now things are connected up. So this is the reason why I had the no-con on the other one, so we didn't need to connect this one. Uh, we th theoretically could, but why bother? This is fine. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, so uh, whether it's good practice or not, this is just meant to illustrate some of the functionality of Meow MeowCAD. Um, so now the only thing that's left to do is to create the board edges. So we have a nice kind of self-contained little board. in these board edges, and there you go. Um, nothing too complex, uh, very simple circuit. You have your battery, your LED, which emits light, and then your resistor, and power flows from positive down to negative, and that's it. Um, so this should be a functioning circuit. Now, um, just a quick little function.
functionality, a piece of functionality that I would like to highlight is the snapshot functionality. Um, you can take a quick snapshot of the project. This is just rendered as a PNG. You can share this with other people if you unlock it. You can just share this URL. Um, provides a nice easy way to display what you're working on without having to do a screen capture and upload, upload it to a image sharing site. Um, this is one step towards making it easier to share schematics and board layouts with other people. So that's pretty much done for the um, simple hello world of electronics. The only thing that's left is to take a look at the output files, the export files, what you would actually give to the board manufacturer. And for that you can export your project by hitting the little download in the cloud button. It takes a little while to render and eventually we get a project. We just open it up. You can see that there are different export directories, subdirectories. The one that we're concerned with is the Gerber subdirectory. This is the one that you would actually give out to the board manufacturers. Um, just as a quick spot check, we'll look at the front copper layer of the board, uh, and we'll open it up with GURBV, which is just a Gerber viewer. It's very standard. And you can see, there it is. This is the front layer. Um, these are the copper portions that are, that'll be, uh, that'll appear on the board. Um, this is just the top layer, without any silk screen, without any drill holes, without any, um, solder mask. So this is, uh, this is just one portion of the, the board design. All of them need to be provided to the board manufacturer in, in order to make a complete board. Um, but in terms of this particular portion of the board, um, this looks good. This looks like uh, what it should. Um, if you package these up into a zip file and send them off to Oshpark, for example, um, they'll be happy to produce boards for you for uh, a very reasonable price. The other export options are KiCad. Um, this is experimental, um, so be careful if you actually want to use it in your project, but in theory this exports to um, the schematic and board portions of KiCad. Um, JSON is what MeowCAD uses internally. It very closely models the schema that KiCad has, at least um, a couple of versions ago, um, rendered in JSON. Um, this is meant for, it's just provided for completeness rather than to be used. Uh, feel free to use it if you like. Um, and finally, the G-code, also experimental, but in theory, this um, mirrors all of the files that, that are produced via the, 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 the Gerber export portion. Um, and this is really meant for people who want to do isolation routing to create PCBs. Um, Again, this is very experimental, so whether the G-code that's produced is valid should be double-checked. Um, all the code to produce the, the, the G-code and the isolation uh, milling is also open source. Um, you can take a look at uh, my GitHub for the, the different portions that I use, the different programs that I use, um, some of my own designs, some of other people's designs. Um, that's at github.com forward slash apetusk. So that concludes the simple circuit design. I just want to briefly go over the just a slightly more complex circuit. This is the circuit that appears on the front page of MeowCAD. This is the 8-bit heart. This is the PCB portion, and this is the schematic portion. Um, all it is really is an Atmega328 that's hooked up to a 4x4 LED matrix. Nothing too complex. It's powered by a CR2032 um, battery on the back. Um, that's what these three pads are. Um, one of the nice things about MeowCAD is uh, is it has a, a workflow that's that's trying to be much more um, bidirectional. So instead of designing your schematic and then working in the PCB, you can bounce back between them much more simply. Um, I think some some of the um, more modern electronic design tools try and, uh, try and do this, so uh, it's not like 
Meowcat is doing anything novel, but it's still very nice. One of the nice things is that you have um, cross net highlighting. So once the net is highlighted in the board portion, it also gets highlighted in the schematic portion. If you can see that uh, PB0 over here, this gets highlighted in the um, in the board. The appropriate net gets highlighted, and vice versa. Um, so that's very nice, especially in this design where I was space constrained. I needed to hook up the traces before I knew where they were placed in the schematic. Um, at least it would have been much more difficult. Um, so I could figure out how to overcome the space constraints here in the PCB and then go back and hook it up appropriately in the schematic instead of having to refer to the data sheet and bounce back and forth between the data sheet and the schematic in order to figure out what, what the exact line was that I wanted. Um, that's pretty much it for Meowcat. Um, Meowcat is live right now and you can visit it at meowcat.com. There's no need to register in order to play around with the schematics or board uh, design portions. Um, it's still very new. There's a lot of functionality and lurking bugs, um, so be on the watch out. Feedback is always welcome, um, either through, either for extra functionality that you would like to see or bugs that are preventing you from doing anything useful. Um, as I said earlier, it's completely free and open source design. Um, feel free to install it yourself, look at how it's done, or contribute. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this screencast, and I hope you enjoy Meowcad. Please feel free to give me an